All right. Queen Elizabeth died at the age of what, 94? 94, 92? 94, I think, yeah. Uh, 92 or 94 or 96. Very bad at dates. Okay, she died, I think, in 94. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, honestly speaking, even though I'm not British, even though I am not, uh, you know, I don't have British citizenship, I've never been to Britain, never had British friends, but her death made me feel sad. Seriously, whether you believe me or you don't believe me, for her death made me feel sad. I always looked upon, looked at her as a, uh, an elegant, very elegant, very beautiful, very loving, very mature, uh, kind of a mother of sorts, uh, like obviously a grandmother, you know? And let's, uh, I'll come to the racist part, I'll come to the colonial rule, all that, okay. I looked, at, looked upon her in that light and she was the, she represented everything that was UK, UK or London or Britain or, you know, was, she was the, the ambassador. She was the, the purest form, the representation of it. And she took upon that mantle in her twenties, man. Imagine she gave 70 years of her life in service to her country, okay? What a incredible achievement. And she has been through world wars. She has been through so many prime ministers. She has seen the ups and downs. Great woman, great woman. For me, I don't know about you, for me. For me, she is an epitome of greatness. And I look at her in the same light, same light as I would look upon as a Mandela, a Gandhi. I know you'll say, oh, Mandela suffered 27 years. Yes, you're absolutely right. Mandela's sacrifice was greater, far greater than anybody. It was as good, as powerful and intense as Gandhi. Okay. Uh, Queen Elizabeth didn't suffer like Gandhi or Mandela, but I'm just saying that she's at that level. The intensity of suffering is greater, I agree, okay? I'm not saying that Queen Elizabeth suffered. She was born in the lap of luxury, totally agree. But I'm talking of service to the nation. If we compare in terms of suffering, yes, she has maybe not suffered as much as Mandela, fine. But service to the country. Where she stands out is elegance. Where she stands out is poise. Where she stands out is class. Where she stands out is, you know that the beauty of being a woman, a mother, a grandmother, a leader. There's no greater uh, personification than Queen Elizabeth. You know, I remember having stamps of a younger photograph. I mean, she's an icon, man. It's like when you say America, uh, America and you say, what, uh, American pie and Thanksgiving and, you know, Christmas and, you know, it's, it's something like that. So, now when she died, uh, I really felt it, uh, whether you believe it or not. I, for a minute, I was like, I wanted to make a video then, but I was like, I just wanted it to sink in. And it's not that I started to cry and all that, but you feel, you know. Okay, and I posted it on my social media. Here's the funny thing. After I posted on my social media, I got one guy who has been a follower or friend of mine on Facebook, although I don't know him personally. Below that, he posted, he wrote down, I will not reveal his name. He said, good. And immediately he said, good. And something about, I don't know, he posted something. So I, I uh, good, uh, so I said, why good? Why are you so happy when someone, you know, someone who has not done anything to you, why are you happy about it? I mean, I don't understand. It's a human being, if nothing else, a human being. His response was, oh, why are you feeling bad? Why are you mourning? Does she mean anything to you? 
Okay, why do you post this or something like that? He responded. So there I responded. Now, because he was a friend, uh, you know, a long time follower, I, I wrote politely. However, when I saw his this response and I saw that he had a bias, I responded by saying, okay, here are the answers. Number one, obviously, she has been a great leader. She has served her country. She has been an icon. She's elegant. She's this. I put all those points. She, she fulfilled her roles and responsibilities. Amazing. Okay. Amazing. And finally, I put the last point. And just so that you know, this is my Facebook page. I can post what I like. And I am, I have the right to share my opinion on what I believe is right or wrong. Okay. Having said that, I also told him, I'd appreciate if you unfriend me or block me because I don't want to keep in touch with individuals like you. Difference of opinion, this and that, fine, I don't care. But I don't want to keep you in my inner circle. Facebook, especially, personal. And then there was another guy who I have been in touch with for quite some time, young chap. And he also posted on a good riddance to the bitch or something like that he posted. I didn't comment anything below that. He was like, it's an end to racism, it's an end to colonialism, a new chapter, fresh beginning, some shit he put, a young boy. And, uh, you know, he's a typical, oh, I'm making so much of money, I'm earning so many figure income and all that bullshit. I, that has to ignore. That is okay. But when he took glee and happiness at someone else's death, and that also, person like that, okay. I just unfriend. I, I didn't say anything. I just unfriend. Okay. Now, I know what are uh, uh, some, some, not all, some people will say, especially Indians, that she, British was, Britain was racist. The second thing what they will put is uh, colonial rule and exploitation. I'll address that. Okay. Now, Agreed during her term, during her term in the office or when she was a queen. This was very prevalent. In fact, Winston Churchill is known to be racist. Okay. Towards Indians or Gandhi and some of his quotes are resurfaced. Now, does that mean I hate Winston Churchill? What he did was wrong. What he did was 100% wrong. I'm not saying it was right. But it was that era. It was a different era. Today, Winston Churchill was alive, and I knew that he was racist. I wouldn't hate him. This is me, huh? I, I'm not talking about you. The me. I wouldn't hate Winston Churchill. I'd say it was a different phase. I'm not trying to be high, you know, a great human being, and I'm trying to transcend greatness. No, nothing. I'm just giving a basic, basic opinion, preference. I wouldn't hold anything against him. Let's say, for example, he murdered Winston Churchill, for example, murdered my great-grandparents. Now, it's very easy for me to talk because it has never happened to me. But let's assume it did. Now, I obviously can't imagine the pain and suffering to know that grandparents, but I would definitely feel, uh, during your rule, my great-grandparents were punished and uh, I'm sorry I can never forgive you, okay? I have nothing against you, but I can't forgive you. And I would prefer not to be in touch or... I would not uh, want anything got to do. Okay, obviously, if parents and all that, then it's a direct descendant and there would, it would be different. Now, for those of you who would like to jump the bandwagon and say, no, you didn't experience it. You don't know what it feels like. Okay, I'll, I'll answer this. My uncle, I've told you this, no? My uncle sexually molested and raped me. Okay? He did this multiple times. Rape and molested me as a child when I was small. Okay? And I'll give another example. My stepfather. He tortured and tormented me. He beat me violently until blood used to come out. Small boy, when I was so small. Above my knees. Now, have I forgiven both my uncle and my stepfather? No. I'll never forgive. And I can't forget also. Sorry. 
ओके बट नाउ द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कम्स फाइन आई डेंट फोगिव एंड फोगेट दिस एस्पेक्ट वॉट अबाउट दे आर चिल्ड्रन नाउ माई अंकल हैज चिल्ड्रन माई स्टेप फादर हैज इज सन हु इज माई हाफ ब्रदर और आई कॉल लाइक माई स्टेप ब्रदर ओके वन सेकेंड लेट मी वॉक थ्रू दिस हाँ सही हाँ कट दिस ऑल्सो हाँ ऑल्सो ओके ओके वेट लेट मी वॉक अ लिल बिट सो नो माई स्टेप स्टेप फादर एज माई हाफ हाफ ब्रदर हिज सन एंड माई दैट अंकल हु मोलेस्टेड मी Rape me, molested me, whatever. He also has his children. Now they didn't do anything. Those people didn't do anything. And whether you believe it or not, I'm perfectly okay with them. I'm in good books with them. We don't call each other literally every day, but whenever we do call, there's a lot of respect between us. Okay. In fact, I'm more closer to the children of. my uncle who molested and raped me i'm more closer to some of the some of the members in their family okay now if i were to follow your logic of ah sorry ka if i were to follow your logic of uh, yeah yeah see logic of uh, being angry being upset you know nowadays this guy keeps coming in wanting to pat my hand Okay, so if I were to follow your logic of uh, being angry for generation and generation, then I would say you owe me an apology. Your next generation owes me an apology. What I like, Shashi Tharoor says, repa- re- repatriations, repatriations, something. People make a big hue and cry. All oh, these repatriations. You are supposed to compensate us for billions of dollars. Man, it was a different phase, man. Agreed. UK or Britain, they exploited India left, right, and centre, hundred percent. I'll not deny that. I'll agree with you. Okay, they were good and they were bad. Like the railways, they set it up. The telegram post, English education, yes. And I'll agree with you if you say that they instilled all this for their benefit. And thanks to Shashi Tharoor, I was able to educate myself. and know that they destroyed a self contained self uh, uh, you know very powerful industry the hand loom and the silk and all that they destroyed it totally agree with you britain at that time did something that was very wrong very very wrong but it was a different phase man like for example let me let me give you a better example let's say my great grandfather or your great grandfather raped many women or killed many people or he was a serial killer your great grand should i hold you accountable for it if my great grandfather did some shit what did i do i was born i don't even have any idea a peaceful guy the problem is you know when you make a non issue an issue just because you're jobless like this idiots they are born in a they are born in a era where uk had nothing to do with them nothing to do with their upbringing nothing to do with their careers nothing to do with their families yet they dig up history and go 70 years ago 100 years ago 500 years ago for what are you some kind of stupid should i dig up let's say for example i meet up someone and then i start digging up his grandfather attacked my great grandfather good the like that indian movie gangs of vasepur yo you killed my great grandfather i'll kill your great grandson six generations hmm. what nonsense is all this man that's why for me i don't see look i'm not saying you're not allowed to have your opinion i'm not saying that you have to agree to my opinion 
All I'm telling you is, this is my point of view. In a day and age where there are people even more brutal and even more evil, you don't mind them, but your problem. Like for example, how much should uh, people hate George Bush? How much should people hate Obama? Why they are saints? How much should people hate Donald Trump? They should be hated much more than this lowly, this poor, this this woman. She de she doesn't, you know, the Queen. They have certain powers, but they are not like the medieval days. Okay, go to war. Everyone rushes to war. Okay, off with his head. They don't have that kind. They represent the sovereignty of a country, and yes, they can influence the decision-making process by requesting the minister. But they don't decide the policy and say, you know, my way or highway. Here's a simple question. Tell me which war did Queen Elizabeth proclaim, announce, and uh, you know, execute? Tell me which war. She stood up and said, "I declare war on this. We will go and fight. You have to go and kill." Where? It is done by the elected officials, man. Yes. Okay. I'll uh, here. I'll be. Honest and transparent with you, I don't know the exact workings. Maybe I can read it online and get an idea. But I, just, uh, not being a politician or an expert in political science, I don't know the exact workings of how the process is. Like, does it go? Do you put a proposal goes to the lower house, upper house, and then House of Commons, and then they take a vote? I don't know the exact process. Maybe you might know better. You can educate me and tell me instead of sharing a link, put something there. Don't just ah, here is the link. Google search twenty links. No, shut up. That is not uh, how you explain things. Because even I can just Google search uh, how does UK Parliament work, copy paste without even reading it. So don't do that stupidity. Then it shows you are an ignorant prick. So. Like I was saying, I don't know the exact workings, but she was not involved, at least directly. See, overall, now the problem is today. See, Prince Charles and that nonsense character Meghan Markle. Consider her one of the. <laughs> it's like you know when someone pukes and then yellow mucus and all that. Meghan Markle is for me like that. She is like a STD. <laughs> Keep far. I really can't stand that woman. So fake and so yucky. Princess Diana at least had class. This woman, what? Prince Charles, okay, ho oh, hum. All the others, okay. Prince Andrew has enough and more controversy. There's nobody like Queen Elizabeth, man. Yes, Princess Diana was close to as perfect as we could get. But there's nobody like uh, Queen Elizabeth. And I don't know if ever, if ever, there'll be another, you know, head of state or head of country like Queen Elizabeth. It's sad, and it's even more sad to see these ignorant bums, nothings and nobodies, the low life, being happy. They have nothing to do with her. She has nothing to do with them, but they are happy, and they are gloating and bloating about, yeah. Good, she died. That's why, for me, if you post something and I don't like, I'm not going to argue with you or anything. Block and delete. In my personal circle, in on my YouTube, it's a public this thing. Feel free to say whatever you like. You're not friends with me uh, in my private space, but in my private space of social media, I don't want to read or listen to nonsense. And I definitely don't want to uh, have to explain myself to them. Hey, what the hell, you this and that? Bugger off. Find someone else who will waste time and argue and talk to you and give you all these reasons. I don't have time. I'm not in the uh, club of. Oh, let me explain myself each and everything. Maybe celebrities would do that. I don't have time for all this shit. Anyway. For me personally, Queen Elizabeth, 
is a legend. Is someone I've, if not uh, le- like looked up to or followed, someone who I've deeply, deeply honored, and uh, I've liked very much. It's sad to see her go. There'll be no one like her who who didn't opt for unwanted attention and did all these gimmicks on social media. She will forever be remembered, in my eyes at least, as this loving, amazing, elegant, beautiful grandmother. Uh, like a loving person, you know. Ah, sad to see her go. There'll only be one Queen Elizabeth, only one. That's all I can tell you. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Good, bad, ugly. Love to hear from you. This is me signing off. You guys take care. Ciao. Are you fed up of life? Earning a pathetic salary, working long hours, having an ungrateful boss, facing office politics, the constant fear of losing your job, and after paying rent, groceries, shopping, and children's expenses, you were left with hardly any savings. Is this the life you dreamed of? Or do you wish to change your life forever? Meet Loy Macedo, the world's number one personal branding coach. He will help you identify the real you. Position and sell yourself by getting the job of your dreams and make good money anywhere in the world. If you do not believe me, Google his name, Loy Macedo, and you will find 2 million web links online and over 200 recommendations from very happy clients. So the question is, do you want to change your life? If yes, then contact Loy Macedo www.loymacedo.com Who is loymacedo.com? Thinkpersonalbranding.com What are you waiting for? Do it now!